Our next guest is an Academy Award-winning producer, director, and actor. His documentary series, Beckham, is streaming now on Netflix. Let's take a look. You know, playing at a national team stadium, playing at Wembley. It's a very emotional moment for me because my dad always used to take me to Wembley to watch England play. That was really what my childhood was all about. So seeing my son come out for the first time at Wembley, I must admit, I had a, I had a little tear. Please welcome to the show, Fisher Stevens, everybody! <laughs> Sure. Thank you. It's so great to be here. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, I know you are a proud member of SAG, and uh, to uh, respect the rules of the strike, we're not going to talk about any of your acting work, but I am just going to vaguely say you were in an excellent show that ended this year, and you were excellent in it. Thank you. Yes. I, uh... but keep it vague. Oh, thank you. I loved uh, being on that show. Yes. And doing that show and sad it ended. That, there you go. That I show. think that's perfect. Okay. That show. Uh, you are an Oscar-winning uh, uh, documentary filmmaker, and this came across your plate, this chance to do a documentary about David Beckham. You weren't necessarily a giant fan of his. This wasn't the sort of project you were out there trying to land. Right. I uh, actually, I, I got a call uh, on my way to that show uh, to work, and um, uh, it was from my old pal Leonardo DiCaprio's office saying... Yeah. <laughs> what a funny way to end that sentence. I know. <laughs> My dear friend, Leo uh, DiCaprio's well, we office. Had, we had made, we made some documentaries together, yeah. and uh, the office said, Leo suggested you to direct David Beckham's documentary, and David wants to talk to you. And I was like, me? David Beckham? Uh, and I, I really wasn't that excited. I love football, soccer. I really got into it after he left England and went to Madrid. And uh, just thought Brand Beckham, Posh Spice, wasn't really that interested. And then I went to work on that show, and the people that were uh, worked on it are all English. And they're like, you have to. He's a legend. Yeah. She's amazing. You don't know what the guy went through. Great story. And I, uh, I did a Zoom with him, and he was very different than I thought. And then met him and his wife for dinner, and they were amazing. Much. To, we had a few drinks, so it was very loose. and <laughs> And... Uh, and they said, oh, Fisher, you don't know our story. You don't know our story. And, and I, I got excited, and that was it. That was it, it is, uh, I, you know, it's, as being a, a football fan, and especially that era, that World Cup that sort of ends the first episode, that's when I really feel like I fell in love with the sport. So I was so excited for that. This is a love story, though, man. It is mm. so wonderful to watch this couple mm. and the way they talk about each other and the way they open up to you. Do you feel like it was easy for them or were they uh, hesitant at all? Well, I asked them, I'm like, why do you want to do this, man? You know, I'm going to be bothering you for the next year and a half. Yeah. I, I need hours and hours, especially, you know, David is not a guy that's used, used to sitting and talking for more than 15 minutes. He's used to, let's go, I got to go here, I got to promote sunglasses, then whiskey, then this and that. Yeah. And um, I said, no, we're going to do three hours and I need time. And he was willing, he really was, but it took, you know, hours. I was with David for over, you know, probably about 40 plus hours. Victoria was much more used to it. She's like, let's go, I wanna talk about this. I wanna yeah. get it off my chest. And, uh, and she was wonderful, um, but, but yeah, I mean, look, it, it's hard to go back and think about, I mean, all of you out there, you Seth, I say, remember that time in your life when you don't wanna remember and you start talking about it. It's not always easy, yeah. but, but uh, I'm, glad it, I'm glad he did. And, you know, it's interesting you say it's not always easy because I think sometimes when someone's been around as long as they have, mm -hmm. you only think of all the good fortune they've had. Right. And uh, this documentary shows that there were these massive highs and lows. Yeah. And it covers them, and, and you sort of live through them with them. There are also great, really funny, really human movie, moments, excuse me, that as a filmmaker, you must think, I can't believe I'm catching this moment. Um, and I want to show a clip, but can you just, did you know how good this was when, when Victoria was talking about her upbringing and, and David popped his head in? I, well, I was kind of pissed off because I was like, what is he doing here? Yeah. Um, I, I, I said, she's not there when you're doing your interviews. So, um, 
but I knew it was kind of magical. And my cameraman and I worked together so much. He just like, you will, you'll see, they just, we flipped the camera on him. But then I told him he's got to get out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, he, you know why he had to get out of there? Because he dropped the mic and it was so good. <laughs> Let's take a look at this okay. wonderful clip okay. between a married couple. Both of our parents work really hard. We're very working, working class. Be honest. I, I am being Be honest. honest. I am being what honest. What car did your dad drive you to school in? So my dad did, No, one answer. My dad, what well, car was it? Uh, it's not a simple answer what because... What car what did you get your dad to drive it you depends. to school in? It depends. No, 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 no. OK, what in car? the 80s, what? my dad had a Rolls Royce. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So good. I know. You also, I mean, you interview, uh, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson, you interview his old teammates, you interview opponents, uh, former paparazzi. <laughs> um, most of them just have nothing but wonderful things to say about him. And it's really, I, I really enjoy his former teammates because they are, a lot of them are giving him a hard time and, and they're making fun of how much money he spent on clothes and, and the yeah. fact that you know he spent uh, a lot of money to buy a pen really made me laugh. Yeah. But you can tell they just love him so much. He's a lovable character. I have to say, I, I did try to get people to talk about him. And, yeah. and nobody, nobody would. I, I guess Glenn Huddle, who was his former yeah. manager of England, uh, he may have, but he wouldn't talk. Um, I tried to get Roy Keane to who's a bruiser, he's a very famous, he was the captain. I said, Roy, when he showed up, you know, with these haircuts and wearing, and when he was in a sarong, did, did, weren't you like upset that he was like taking it? He said, I love them, I love them. <laughs> I'm like, geez, so I couldn't get anybody to talk, yeah. But um, he's a lovable guy. It's know? interesting because I wonder if you found in doing this exercise, there's these wonderful shots where you are filming him and other players watching mm. themselves. Yeah. And you get the sense that these athletes, and obviously, I guess, having lived it, they don't feel much need to go back and watch old highlights. Yeah. And so you not only realize, oh, I'm watching him watch this play, but he maybe hasn't watched it since it happened. Yeah, with the exception of the Greece, famous Greece yeah. goal, which he had watched recently, he hadn't seen himself play. He, I, I showed him, uh, there's a clip where I show him his first appearance, he's 17 years old. He comes out like a little fawn, like he could barely walk. <laughs> and he hadn't seen that. I don't think he'd ever seen that or, you know, and it blew his mind, right? And he's so vulnerable and he's looking at it and he's like getting emotional. And, uh, and Eric Cantona, a legendary French yeah. player, uh, hadn't obviously watched him play, himself play for years. For, and just to get those, those expressions, that vulnerability of these, tough, hard athletes being like little children again was sort of what we were after, and especially David, because um, just to see into his soul for that brief moment was, was sort of what we were after. There's a real wonderful moment, because again, I think of Eric Cantona as this very sort of hard yeah. player. This guy did not show much emotion other than it seemed like rage. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And you, you tell him, because uh, you show that clip from the first game, and you say, you know, David said the best moment about his first goal was he got to run over and hug you. And you, t and you watch it land on Eric Cantona, and he just goes, he did? Yeah. And it's, it's so, so it's a really wonderful moment. Yeah. Um, I, I want to finish because, uh, you know, we started by talking about SAG. I did not realize this uh, until today. Uh, you, uh, you were not uh, born Fisher Stevens, and SAG is the reason you are Fisher Stevens. Right. My name, I was born Mike Johnson. <laughs> There was, there was a guy named Mike Johnson. That's your, guess what? You just did your Rolls Royce. That's real uh, good. <laughs> no, I, I know. No, uh, I was born S Stephen Fisher. And when I, when I got my SAG card, uh, and the producers of the movie that I had just done called me and said, you can't use your name, Stephen Fisher. You need to either put a middle name in there or change your name. And everybody called me Fish. My dad called me Fish. And there was a sign that I used to see. It said Fisher Dash Stevens Stoves in Brooklyn on, these, on this building. And I got the idea. I'll just reverse it, Fisher Stevens. But uh, I changed the Steven from S T E P H E N to S T E V E N S. But yeah, so let's get back to work, Sack. Come on. <laughs> let's go. We got a Fisher Stevens who's chomping at the bit. Beckham is streaming now on Netflix. It's fantastic. We'll be right back with more late night.